Okay, today's daily movement is going to be pretty cool. It's all about the hips. So just get some space and start doing this. So what's happening is we're raising past 90 degrees. So just bring it up to the point where there's like a little bit of a squeeze. And we're not too concerned about what's happening with the ankle or the knee so much. Well, we're not concerned at all, really. But we're lifting that hip up. And you can kind of, you know, some things to notice are when you lift the hip up, when you lift, you know, when you rotate a hip like this, you know, your body kind of turns, doesn't it? Naturally, like it's like this is an exercise. That is something. Let's just not restrain the body like that, though. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a few things. We're gonna start to lift it up at different angles as well. See if you can at least match this height, just so you can see what's going on. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter so much if the pelvis is kind of rounding or you're going back like that, that's fine. Don't worry, you don't have to be like, her, her. Don't worry, it's just as long as you're using these hip flexors to lift your hip, lift your leg above hip height, you're winning. So let's expand it to a few different types of lift, right? Probably feeling it already. So, and I'll explain the different types of hip flexors as we do it. So let's go outside. This won't be easy. Okay, so we've got outside, straight up outside. That's good. Let's learn a few more. So this is just to the outside, to the side of your body. No big deal. It's not directly 100%, it's just to the side. Okay. Now, let's do across the body. For balance, you can use your arms like this, but you're really coming Cross, and you'll feel it more on the inside because you have different hip flexes for different positions. So far, we've done outside, just follow along, done outside, and done straight, we've done inside. What else is there? This is knee rotated, I mean, I'm sorry, hip rotated inward. So obviously there's hip rotated outward. Let's try that. Probably feeling it. I'm definitely feeling it. So, when you go out here, I'm not exactly sure what gets used. I'm not really sure about that one. That's pretty tough. But, you've got these like, um, I'll just explain what muscles there are. So, you've got here, which is probably one that you're really feeling. Called the tensor fascia latte, latte, and it goes from pretty much here, I guess, on your pelvis, down here, down to here, right? And yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, it goes down, and some of it goes on directly onto your uh, your leg, your femur bone. And some of it goes down onto this thing called the IT band. The IT band is this band 
on the side of your leg. And it's not really a muscle, although it's tensile, it's, it's fascia. I don't really know much about it, but it comes down and I think it goes onto your, uh, maybe your fibula, which is the outside, there's two bones. I'm not 100% sure though, it might, it might still go onto your tibia. I just really don't know, but it it's attaches onto the outside of your knee. So, there is actually, you're actually lifting up, like, the whole way with, with that, you know, just like, that one's doing that, a job like that, and that IT band, actually your gluteus maximus comes down and form, goes onto that as well. Okay, so you also got ones that you're attached to your spine, it's called your uh, psoas. So they come up from here and they go onto your spine and like a lot of your spine as well, like like all there. You can actually touch it, the, the, the psoas, by digging in here, like getting behind your abs kind of, you can touch it. Maybe just pick up the pace a bit. And just a bit more, a bit more bigger. Remember to breathe. So what else you got? You've got one called the iliacus. Iliacus actually attaches onto the inserts. I think they say inserts, I'm, I'm not sure. But it just goes onto the same place of your legs as the soaps. But the origin is your pelvis. <laughs> And it's pretty hard to understand. I certainly don't have a good understanding of it. It's pretty hard to feel, but it's like it's like in there, on your, in your on your pelvis. So there's a common pulling point on your femur, and it's pulled from your spine and your pelvis. So if you want to use those things. If you want to go up a pull on your leg, then you need to have some stability in your pelvis and your spine. Otherwise, this would be a good definition of stability for you. Otherwise, when you go like this, you just go <laughs> because your spine's not held stable. But because you hold it and don't just go, <laughs> then you can actually pull on it. That's why you need stability. You need to be able to keep up keep a particular bone, boom, in place, so that something else can pull on that bone, okay? What else you got? You got these inner ones, right? When you pull it up, let's, uh, let's really push it over. Are you trying to twist into it? And you should feel it really in close to the groin kind of thing like here. So we're, we're doing a bit of a twist just so that we squeeze it together. And you'll feel that. You will feel that. You can do it like you're, you know. Okay, what else you got? Sartorius. So they say the sartorius is a muscle for when you want to look at the sole of your foot to see if you got gone there. Sartorius is the longest muscle in the human body. And it goes from right up here on the uh, pelvis. And it goes all the way down here to here, right? So it crosses the femur, starts on the pelvis, crosses the femur, and attaches on to your tibia. And now you can understand why it works to do this. It's obvious, right? Like imagine, whew, like just pulling, it's obviously gonna do that. So it can rotate, <laughs> the knee in a way, rotate the lower leg, it depends how you want to 
Look at it. So let's go. Okay. Definitely feeling this. <laughs> Let's uh, just to make it a bit tougher. Okay, and let's do this one as well. So this one definitely uses the tensor fascia latte. I just never know how to pronounce it. No one knows how to pronounce it. Because you can see it, it rotates. Because that muscle internally rotates your leg. Try this. Outside. Definitely feeling that. You just keep pressing that. So you should be feeling this whole thing, like all around, right? Okay, let's uh, go, you know, start in and go out. You know, like, a, like you're gonna go. And let's, like you're stepping over a fence, right? Kind of. Let's do some fast ones. Really? Right. Like, do it like you really want to get something out of it. You know? Look at the gum. You know, some people can lift this up and put it over their freaking head. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm just like, to here. That's, that's why we're doing it. <laughs> that's why we're doing this, right? Well, the point of this is to get people like I am currently, <laughs> still am, and other people who are just not good at moving their body. Because I used to be terrible at moving my body, which meant, because like I just didn't understand this concept of movement at all. Like the fact that you're meant to do it. Like, I had like sore muscles and I was like, how do we relax these muscles so well? I should relax more, be all relaxed. But Edwin, who's of course the foundations of movement is in the descriptions. Greatest course <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> He says, let's keep going. He says, um, it gets hard to think when you get that. Um, I forgot what he's talking about. Let's see if I can remember. Outside. I'm noticing a bit of freedom in those hips now. Like, you know, like, They're moving out better. Go. Let's go. Yeah, I forgot what I was going to say. But he's a smart cookie. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I bet you're feeling this. And yeah, Edwin says that if you try to relax stuff, right? Check this out. If you try to relax stuff, if you try to focus, if you focus on relaxation and if you focus on posture, like a good relaxed posture, just get into a good relaxed posture. <laughs> That's what you want to do. Just relax into a good posture. That is bullshit <laughs> because if you try to do that, you focus on trying to put yourself into some ideal, still, still, non-moving 
posture, because posture is static. Posture is not, the concept of posture is static. It's not a moving concept, it's static. So if you try to relax into a posture, just like hold a posture in a real nice relaxed way, just be in a relaxed posture, you can't do it. Firstly, because as I said, posture is static. The idea of posture is static. You're trying to get yourself into a still position. And secondly, because you, your muscles don't have a thing called relax. <laughs> they, they don't have that. They just have and, and go. You know, they just have on. So if you literally focus on the muscle and apply your consciousness to an area of muscle, you tense it because that only has that mode. Well, once you get a better conscious connection, there seems to be some way to like tell your body to relax, but it's just different. It's not the same. Okay. Your hips should have loosened. Try to like, let's do it. Oh yeah, this is what I wanted to do. We'll do this for the last two minutes, right? Squeeze your lower leg to your upper leg. So you're squeezing your hamstring, right? Squeeze, squeeze. Whoosh. Try to get it like a nice rotation like this, right? And you should feel like a lengthening at each one. See how the body has this spiral, dynamic, like rotational line in it? It's like, you know, all I'm really doing is lifting these up out of the side and like exaggerating what the body does naturally. The body just goes in this funny rotational arc. Okay, so that's pretty good. I wish I'd done more of these, but that's pretty good, right? We'll just do a few more like this, right? You feel the glutes come into it a little bit. Just the side glutes, glute medius. They all work together. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay. Good job. Good job, okay. See you tomorrow.